Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. My neighbor brought his 2012 Buick Enclave over because he says the dash is a Christmas tree. He says service the bill track, ABS lights on, traction control. So let's see what's going on with this thing. It has 146,000 miles on it. And he says Christmas tree's annoying. So let's see what's going on. Traction control off. Service traction control. Service to build track, just like the customer said. Alright, let's uh, fire up the scanner using the Think Tool Platinum S10. Scan this thing for code, see what's going on. ABS traction control lights are illuminated. Alright, we got a mostly green tree. <clears throat> Magic computer says engine misfire detected. Probably from um, direct injection, it might need an intake manifold cleaning for the uh, gummed up intake valves. EBCM is one code. C0045-5A, left rear wheel speed sensor circuit plausibility failure. Interesting. So right off the bat, let's go in here, and on data stream, I just want to graph all of the wheel speeds. So left front, left rear, right front, right rear. Graph that. Let's take it for a spin. Okay, so focus on the left rear. So I just backed up, pulled forward. Here is what it's supposed to look like. Here's what it looks like. Not exactly the same. I mean, it's close. You wouldn't think there's a problem there. It's a little different, like the steps are a little bigger. So at first glance, it looks like all the wheel speed sensors are working. This one's just a little different. So my first suspicion would be something's wrong with the magnetic encoder ring on the wheel bearing assembly. So with this data, I'm going to pull in the shop, take off the left rear wheel, move the axle out a little bit, and just take a look at the magnetic encoder ring. So let's, let's do that. And see if it needs a wheel bearing or can we fix it? No parts required? I'm not sure. Check that out. That's definitely a glitch. All the other ones are smooth. Boom. Drops out. I'll take a picture of that. Um, so first, I actually want to put an oscilloscope on these rear wheel speed sensors just to see if there's a repetitive glitch that would definitely indicate an encoder ring problem. Alright, so where is the easiest place to hook up the scope to these wheel speed sensors? So the rear, left rear and right rear go through two intermediate connectors. The EVCM is over by the brake booster, X100 and X405. So X100 is right up here up top on the passenger side of the engine compartment. And it's a 16 pin connector so let's find that so here is connector X100 I found pins 9 and 10 so pin 9 is the uh, TAN wire that's channel 1 that's going to be our 12 volt feed to the sensor to the left rear and then channel 2 is on the orange wire that's going to be the signal or low reference so let's hook up the Pico 
and roll this thing down the driveway see what that wheel speed sensor signal looks like okay here we go just two channels 20 volt scale turn the key on so you can see that's 12 volt reference the blue channel and the red one went up a little bit so I'm gonna bump the scale down for channel 2 0 0.5 volts it looks like so the signal should be on that red line at 500 millivolts. Now it looks noisy because it's a small scale. There you go. There's a signal. Let's bump that scale to 5 volts. Bring it down here. And see if there's anything weird on the signal itself. So far it looks normal. Let's just roll it down the driveway. So I'm graphing right rear and left rear. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, there was a dropout on scan data right there. So let's pause it and zoom in on that signal. I love the Pico scope, look at that, repetitive. Missing tooth, right there. Missing tooth, missing tooth. So we have one little bad spot on that encoder ring. Now, I feel 100% confident in taking the axle out, or at least moving it out, and doing a visual inspection on the encoder ring. That's a neat capture. That's why you want to use a scope. Um, we just proved that wiring is good, the sensor is good, the EBCM is good. We're going right after this encoder ring. We got the wheel off. Let's see if we can loosen up this axle nut with the Rev Stark. It's a 33 millimeter socket. The axle is free. Fantastic. Now, I wonder if we can see the wheel speed sensor tone ring from the back side. So we're safely under the car, jack stand and jacks. So here's the wheel speed sensor right here. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. It's kind of tight. Let's see if we can position the light a little better. Everything's kind of in the way. There you go. So there's the sensor. You can see, see it's sticking out. And sure enough, there is a spot where there's a missing section of the reluctor. Right there. Can you guys pick that up? There it is. So that magnetic ring just rusted off, I guess. So we need a new wheel bearing to fix this problem, even though the wheel bearing itself is just fine. It's not humming, it's not loose. That's crazy. Just rusted, rusted right off. So, removing this wheel hub, obviously rotor's off, caliper's off, parking brake shoe assembly is off, and I want to use no air hammer. We're just using an impact gun 
and the Astro Last Chance Impact Rated Hub Removal Bull Kit. I think this was designed um, by, uh, I guess, with the recommendation of Eric O because he deals with these rusty hubs all the time. So, pretty simple, just a bolt, nut, and a little backer, um, backstop cup. So, we want to pull this hub off of the actual knuckle. So it's aluminum knuckle, steel hub, you know it's going to be seized hardcore. And, I mean, a couple other tools here, you can get one of those um, hub shockers. It kind of looks like you know, bolts on here and it's just a big bar and you smash it and it just tweaks the hub right out of the knuckle. That's one option, but you can also use this pull screw method. You just need to remove one of the wheel studs, or more than one. In this case, the wheel studs are really long, so I couldn't remove it without cutting it in half with the grinder. So let's give it a whirl. I'm just going to force this. And keep in mind, you want to have the axle nut on because that keeps the hub together. If you take the axle nut off, then the hub will separate from you know the, the inner race here, that triangle piece. You don't want that. You want to keep the hub together and pull the whole thing off of the, um, the knuckle. So you can see already it's coming out. So we can just rotate this around to a different spot and then force it from this side or you can cut another stud off and put the second screw comes with four different sizes here or two of each size um, and just evenly pull it off no crazy air hammering required no chisels it's a lot safer this way you just controlled pull it off and you're good to go so reposition the screw right here on this nice solid surface. Let's keep going. It's coming out. You see the corrosion right in the gap? So we're almost there. Maybe we'll do one more pull up here. Basically home free. We do one more pull from uh, this side over here. You can see it's uh, it's basically out. So this method might take a little bit longer than other methods, but I've never had it fail. Okay, well, the hub is out. Now it's just stuck to the uh, the backing plate a little bit. Yeah, we're we're good. Now we can remove the axle nut. Get that out of the way. And you can see. The hub is still slightly stuck. And this is how I hammered my thumb. I used a um, an air hammer to get the hub out the rest of the way. By the way, there's the magnetic tone ring. It's junk, so the same thing is going to happen on the other side. It's falling apart. Boom. On the ground. There's our old hub. Let's pop a new one in. This is crazy. This is the magnetic tone ring. Rusty piece of crap. <laughs> Why don't they just make this out of stainless? Same exact thing is going to happen on the other side. You know it. So, before installing the new bearing hub assembly, you want to clean out all of the nastiness out of the actual knuckle because I want this new hook to go in nice and easy. 
We'll grease this up a little bit. Get that cleaned up. Stick the new hub on there, good to go. Fisher Auto Parts came through with brand new wheel hub, made in Korea, but NTN, I haven't had any problems with them, so they have it in stock for a reasonable price. That's a good thing. So let's just slide it on here. So put marine grease all over the actual interface and the splines just to prevent future seizure. seizure. Right, so this goes on here. a little more on this one because that also rusts to the hub. Basically in the salt belt, just grease everything, oil everything. <laughs> it won't hurt. It will only help. So just about like that. Nicely, I'll just bolt it in, take it for a spin, make sure all the wheel speed sensors are happy. All right, so let's clear out the trouble code. Yes, okay. Traction control on, that's good. Just look at that data stream. Just do the rears. Graph that, and we'll graph the signal on the scope that's rolling. Let's see what happens. Okay. speeds look identical and let's pause the scope make sure all the segments are on the tone ring signal actually looks cleaner overall yep perfect so that's fixed so if you own one of these enclaves or traverses and you're in the salt belt and your ABS lights on and you have that code most likely you're gonna have a rusted off magnetic tone ring might as well replace both hubs if you're doing it yourself but we'll just do one at a time here um, check out those Astro hub um, extractor tools very handy to have no air hammer required. Much safer for uh, for your thumb. That's healing. <laughs> so we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.